Mark Kellogg's luck peaked in 1861 when, at the age of 29, he married Martha Robinson. The happy couple had two beautiful daughters. During the years of the American Civil War, Kellogg became the assistant editor for the La Crosse Democrat newspaper in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Then things began to sour. In 1867, he unsuccessfully ran for public office. Next, his beloved wife died. He left his daughters under the care of an aunt and began drifting west. Kellogg was a typical frontier newspaper stringer who floated around writing columns and articles for a variety of publications to scratch out a living. It was a living, but not enough to take care of his two daughters. In the early 1870s, Kellogg moved to Bismarck, North Dakota and became an editorial assistant for the Bismarck Tribune. Kellogg's big break came when the newspaper's editor, Clement A. Lounsbury, learned that a military column, including the 7th U.S. Cavalry, commanded by George Armstrong Custer, would soon leave a Fort Abraham Lincoln to fight the Sioux. Lounsbury asked Kellogg to accompany Custer's cavalry. Custer warmly welcomed Kellogg. It was by courting the press that the flamboyant Custer had become a national celebrity. Kellogg did not disappoint. Acting as a correspondent for the Bismarck Tribune and the New York Herald, America's best-paying newspaper at that time, Kellogg wrote, and now, a word for the most peculiar genius in the army, a man of strong impulses, of great-hearted friendships and bitter enmities, of quick, nervous temperament, undaunted courage, will, and determination, a man possessing electrical mental capacity, and of an iron frame and constitution, a brave, faithful, gallant soldier, who has warm friends and bitter enemies, the hardest rider, the greatest pusher, with the most untiring vigilance, overcoming seeming impossibilities, and with an ambition to succeed in all things he undertakes, a man to do right as he construes the right in every case, one respected and beloved by his followers, who would freely follow him into the jaws of hell of Lieutenant Colonel G. A. Custer, am I now writing. Do not think I am overdrawing the picture. The pen picture is true to life and is drawn not only from actual observation, but from an experience that cannot mislead me. In another dispatch, Kellogg wrote, the hope is now strong, and I believe well-founded, that this band of ugly customers, known as Sitting Bull's Band, will be gobbled and dealt with as they deserve. His last dispatch read, By the time this reaches you, we would have met and fought the Red Devils, with what result remains to be seen. I go with Custer, and will be at the death that is, in at the kill. On June the 25th, 1876, the day of battle, Kellogg mounted on a mule had trouble keeping up with the swiftly moving Custer. He borrowed a pair of spurs to keep the mule moving, saying that he expected interesting developments. Kellogg never caught up with Custer on Last Stand Hill. On June the 27th, his body was found in a ravine, scowled, and missing an ear. He was identified by the distinctive boots he wore. The New York Herald erected a grave marker for Kellogg on the battlefield and provided financial aid to his daughters. The Associated Press claimed the freelance writer Kellogg as one of their own and dubbed him the first AP reporter to die in the line of duty. In 1976, several local newspaper, radio, and television organizations erected 
a memorial plaque in his honor at the Oak Grove Cemetery in La Crosse, Wisconsin, near his wife's grave. Kellogg's satchel, pencil, and eyeglasses are on display in the Museum of Journalism, the Museum, in Washington, D.C. Mark Kellogg enjoys a posthumous glory he never experienced in life.